In this week's Tablet Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how I built this two color Pareto area chart for this week's Makeover Monday. A reader asked that I do this because they really liked how I put these interactive tooltips in here. But it was also a bit tricky to use an area chart and make it two color in Tableau. So I'm going to walk you through how to build this from scratch. So the first thing we need to do is to build the area, or, I'm sorry, to build the Pareto chart. So I'm going to drag company to the columns. And you'll notice I created a calculation for the amount held offshore because the raw, the source data uh, was, in, was in millions. So I just created a new calculation. And then we go ahead and sort that in descending order. And from here, I create a two-part calculation on my, uh, my amount held. So I'm going to add a table calculation. I'm going to make it a running total based on company. And then I'm going to add a secondary calculation, which is my percent of total based on company. And then I just go ahead and I choose fit to entire view. And one of the things you'll notice is as we get out here, if I go ahead and put amount held offshore onto the detail shelf, you'll notice there's a lot of companies that don't have any money held offshore or there's nothing listed. So I'm actually going to go ahead and create a set so I can get rid of those. So I'm going to just going to call these companies with money offshore. And I'm going to choose use all. And in my condition, I'm just going to say the amount held offshore has to be bigger than zero. Hit OK. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drag that to the filter shelf. And now every company that's listed here has money held offshore. OK, great. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to convert our uh, our x our uh, x axis to a dimension as I'm sorry to a measure as well. So I'm going to duplicate my company field onto the detail shelf, and then I'm going to go ahead and make this a count distinct. From here, I just have to add a table calculation. That is our running total. and we want to do it along company. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and I can go ahead and close that. And then from here, I'm just going to switch it to an area chart to make it look a little bit nicer. Oops. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and clean up my, tool, my, uh, my axes. So I'm just going to call this percent of total money offshore. And then I'm going to just call this one I don't know why Tableau likes to do that. I'm going to just call this axis number of companies. And hit OK. Great. So now I'm going to actually need to use both of these calculations again later. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag these to the measures area. So I'm going to call this percent of running total money something like that. And then I'm just going to call this one uh, number of running companies. And I like to put the word running in there so that I remember it's the one for my table calculation. All right, great. So now the next thing that we need to do is um, uh, I want to go ahead and I need want to break this up by the two parts. So if you notice over here in the original, I have a two color uh, area chart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a set based on the top end companies. So I'm going to create another set and I'm just going to call it my top end. Choose use all in the uh, general tab. Go to the top by field and I'm just going to create a parameter. So I'm going to just call it how many companies. And uh, I'm not going to set any range here. Uh, we'll just make it, we'll allow any value to be typed in. I'll start it to the top 30. Hit OK. And now we have a uh, parameter, or I'm sorry, a set that we can put onto the color shelf. But you'll notice how my Pareto gets broken up here. So first I'm going to go ahead and make my ins green and my outs gray, so that's good. 
and then change my color to 100%. All right, so, or maybe I'll make it like 75%, something like that, not quite that bold, good enough. Okay, so from here, I have to go back into my table calculations, and I need to fix these to use both, um, both dimensions, so the set and the companies. All right, so now it splits the view up, but that's okay, I'm, I don't mind that too much. The next thing that I want to do is um, I want to go ahead and add a reference line for the number of companies. So I'm just going to drag a reference line on to the number of companies. And I can just call this uh, number of companies. Or no, I want to make this based on my top n. And I'm going to put the value on the label. Hit OK. And then I'm just going to go ahead and format this so that my label is at the top. Okay, so now if I go ahead and I show my parameter, and let's say I make this top 50, my line moves nice and neat. I really like that. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I want to create another reference line for the other side. Uh, so the, to do that, we need to create a calculated field. So I'm just going to call this percent of money reference line. And in this case, I'm going to use an index function. So I'm going to say if the index is equal to the parameter, then I want to bring back my percent of money held offshore. So I could just drag this in. Let me put this down here to make it a little cleaner. And end. And hit OK. So now I can drag this onto the detail shelf and edit the table calc again to use both dimensions. OK. And now you can see, uh, all right, so it looks like uh, it looks like I broke something here. So let's see. Um, okay, so we want to, let's see, let's do it this way. Let's actually just drag on a reference line, sorry about that, to the percent of companies. And I think we could just leave it like this. So let's leave the, let's put the value on there, untick the recalculate. Okay, there we go. So uh, basically that's what I was looking for here. So I'm going to edit this, or let's see, let's go ahead and format our field to make it uh, zero percentages. Okay, so now this is telling me that um, 88%, but actually I want it to stop here at the top of the set. So this calculation isn't quite right. So uh, let's make this a sum. Nope. I'm going to do average. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm messing something up here in my calculation. So what I'm going to do is um, percent held offshore. Okay. So we want to say, uh, where's my percent of money reference line? Let's see. Um, okay, so let's, if the, so we're, now we're saying if the index is equal to that, okay, I know what I did, I messed up here. So let's put this on detail again. Let's edit the, cal let's edit the calculation. And we want it to be across both, but then I need to actually go into my percent of running money and do the same there. Okay, so that looks correct now. All right, so uh, we can go ahead and change our reference line to be based on the percent of money reference line and make it a sum. No, yeah, we could do sum, that's fine. Okay, there we go, that's what we're looking for. All right, so let's edit the, cal let's uh, format this field and let's just make it a percentage to no decimals. Okay, perfect. So this is telling us that 50 companies make up 76% of the money held offshore. So if I change this back to, let's say, 30, you can see 30 companies make up 65%, or if I do the top 25, the top 25 make up 61%. All right, so the next thing we want to do 
is we want to actually create a dynamic title. So I'm going to just go ahead and double click on my title shelf. And uh, what we want to do here is we want to say something like uh, the number of companies, companies account for, and we want to go ahead and put our reference line in here. So let's insert our reference line um, of the money held offshore. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and format that, maybe make it uh, green to represent money and to be consistent with the rest of my colors. All right, so we hit apply. And now we can see 25 companies make up 61%. So if I change this to 30, basically it just helps people interpret the Pareto a little bit better. I think I'm going to change my gray here to be a slightly lighter color of gray. Okay, I like that better. All right, so now we're saying 30 companies account for 65% of the money held offshore. Great, so we're almost there. So the next thing we need to do is we want to create kind of these dynamic tooltips. So if you go back over to the original, you'll see my tooltips have the company name, has the 126, blah, blah, blah. So we need to create a few calculations to make that work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a calculated field based on the number of companies. So uh, I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to call this pers uh, end of, or let's call it after percent, because this is like the TH or the ST that I want after that. So I'm going to say if ends with, and I need to convert the number of companies to a string. Um, and if the, that string ends with an 11, oops, then we want to do we want to put a TH after it. And now I just need to repeat this a few times for the different options. So if it ends with a one, uh, let's see. So the next thing we need to do is if it ends with a one, we want to put a ST. And I put a 11 first so that that would get caught before the one. Okay. And now I could say if it ends with a two, then we want to do an ND. Uh, and if it ends with a three, want to do RD, else we want to end with a TH. All right, so hit OK, and I'm just going to drag that onto the detail shelf. And Again, I need to edit my table calc to make sure it's computing correctly. It is, all right, pick that up automatically, that's great. Okay, um, and now we want to have different formats based on the value. So these first few that are in the billions, I want to end with a B. And then once I just get under a billion, I want to change it to a million. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another calculated field. And I'm going to call this billions. And I'm going to say something like if the amount held offshore is less than, uh, is greater than or equal to a billion, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then I want to do um, the amount held offshore times a million, three, four, five, six, uh, okay, end. So that would be my billions, and then I'm just going to duplicate that and edit and call this one millions. And then this time I'm going to say if it's less than a billion. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change my default number format for my billions to be a number to one decimal in the billions, and I want to put a dollar sign at the beginning. And then my millions, I'm going to default properties number format. I'm going to just make this one a number to no decimals. And I want it to be in the millions. Okay, so now I'm going to drag both of these fields onto the detail shelf. So I think now I have everything that I need in order to 
Um, now one last thing I need to do is it looks like I have a percent of, so you see I have my percentage in there. Let's wait for the Viz to refresh here. So the last thing is on the bottom line, you'll see where I have a percentage. Uh, so 0.03%. So that is what does that company represent of the total? So I need to create one more field, percent of total money. And for this one, it's going to simply be the sum of their amount held offshore divided by the total oops, of the sum of the money. Uh, let's see. Oops. Amount held offshore. All right. And I'm missing a bracket. I got that right. I see. Da, da, da. I have too many brackets here. That and that. Okay, and we want to go ahead and default properties number format and make this a percentage to two decimals. And let's go ahead and drag that onto the detail shelf as well because we need it for our tooltip. And then we're going to edit the table calc. And again, we want to make sure it uses the specific dimensions. Okay, great. So uh, this all looks good. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is go ahead and clean up our tooltip. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything out. I'm going to untick the include command, and I'm just going to start entering what I need. So the first thing I'm going to put is the company name. Has the, uh, actually, let's go ahead and make this. I'm going to undo because I want to maintain some of this boldness in here or this font. So I'm going to say insert the company and let's make that bold and black. Has the, and now I'm going to insert my percentile. Mm, my uh, number of companies. Let's see. And then I want to put the little uh, TH or the ST on the end. So uh, it looks like, uh, okay, it looks like I forgot to bring that into the view. So I need to put that. Oh, no, I do have after percentage on there. I called it something different. Uh, let's see, where is it? All right. And so if I hit preview, you'll see it'll say uh, Apple has the whatever. Okay, so that's not, it. we'll fix that in a minute. Okay, most money held offshore. All right, and then I want to go ahead and make this bold and make it green. And then I want to say with um, the, and this is where I'm going to put their value. So I need to put billions and then I'm going to put millions. So only one of these will ever display because of the way I created the calculation. Held off, offshore. And then I'm going to insert the company again. Uh, accounts for. And now I want to put the percent of total in there. Percent of total money. Of money held offshore by U.S. companies. Something like that. All right, so again, I'm going to take my millions and billions, make that bold and green, make the company black and bold, and then make this one bold and green. Okay, so now let's give this a shot. So we're saying Coke Oracle has the 14th most money held offshore. Let's start at the beginning. Apple has the first most money held offshore with 181 billion held offshore. You notice how the billions is formatted nice and neat. They've got 8.4%. So all this looks like it's working pretty well. And, to, and I get over here to the millions. You'll see that my in my tooltip, my amount changes to millions instead of billions. So um, that's about it. Uh, again, you can just go ahead and play with the parameter at this point. And you can see how the how it moves nice and neat. So um, quite a few tricks there to get this to work just right. But I think it's really fun to be able to use uh, reference lines and parameters and table calcs uh, in order to be able to split up your view this way. And it gives a really, really nice, neat story for the user. So hopefully you found that helpful. And I'll be back next week with another tip. Have a great day.